Hello and welcome back to our FCS Dynasty and NCAA Football 2006. Today we got a full broadcast as the 4 and 5 Northern Colorado Bears travel to take on the 5 and 4 Southern Utah Thunderbirds who are one win away from bowl eligibility. This is a huge game for both teams. Northern Colorado, they need two more wins to become bowl eligible. And this could be a rough test for them today. Smokey Cowhead, number one player on the team, Gavin Brady. Sebastian Hernandez, Mike Heath, Darrell Stats, Will Jefferson. A lot of solid players on this team, but they are weak on the defensive side of the ball. They have Bully Cooper at strong safety and Deacon Cooper at free safety. They need some speed on offense. Howard Bresnagel is their only receiver, 80 speed. A lot of raw player builds on this roster. Darius Mitchell, of course, the sophomore, the only sophomore out of our subscriber players with that 85 speed at halfback. He's almost at 1,000 rushing yards this year as well. Brandon Lee, fullback for the Thunderbirds, 91 overall. All the fullbacks have pretty high overalls. It's hard to really keep them low. See his overall, or his awareness is a 56, so I did all I could to keep his overall down. But Bryce King, 84 overall, strong safety. Jericho Stevens, CJ Moreland, the local, you know, touchdown giver. Juan Freeman, Adam Joseph, Brandon Red, Donald Lee Jr., Owen Gregory at quarterback who has struggled mightily this season. Cameron Matthews at halfback. Prince McCutcheon at wide receiver. That's it for the rosters. Take a look at the conference. The wackiest conference in all of college football. Southern Utah is third right now. Northern Colorado is in fifth. Every single team still has a chance at winning the Pac-10 conference. But the Thunderbirds 4 and 1, Northern Colorado is 3 and 2 in the Pac-10. You see Darius Mitchell needs 11 yards rushing for 1000 on the season. Cameron Matthews for the Thunderbirds already has 1000. Brandon Lee 14 touchdowns, insane numbers. Bully Cooper with 52 tackles. And here we are at Cedar City, Utah as the Northern Colorado Bears travel to take on the Thunderbirds and I have the Bears winning this one. After they beat Cal Poly, they put a little bit more faith in me. Or I put a little bit more faith in them. However you want to say that. But the Thunderbirds will start out on offense first. And we'll get to see if they are going to struggle. Like they have been recently on offense. They're very inconsistent. They like to either score a touchdown quickly. Or go three and out. There's really no in between. And it's kind of sad. But they're going to start this drive at their own 26 yard line. 27 yard line, excuse me. On offense, we've got Owen Gregory, Cameron Matthews at halfback, Brandon Lee at fullback, Jaquan Freeman and Prince McCutcheon at receiver, and Brandon Red at guard. Gregory under center, gonna throw it on the first play of the game. And he takes a shot, nice pass actually out to Jaquan Freeman, his 16th reception on the season. 10 yard pickup that gives him. 347 yards receiving on the season. Only one score, though. Prince McCutcheon leads the team in touchdown receptions with three, but he only has eight receptions on the entire year. Gregory going to throw it again, and he is sacked, actually. Non-subscriber defensive end, or defensive tackle, comes in. His first sack on the season. And the offense for the Thunderbirds had a good start with the first play, and now they're going backwards. But they got plenty of weapons. Brandon Lee is an absolute beast at fullback. Cameron Matthews, already over 1,000 rushing yards on the season. You got to pound the rock with these guys. And they're going to just continue to throw the football. And another nice completion out to Jaquan Freeman. His 17th reception on the year. That gives him over 350 yards receiving. 353 to be exact. Third down and seven. Four wide receivers set. Cameron Matthews in the backfield. Gregory is going to throw it again. And takes a deep shot. And it's somehow completed to a non-subscriber receiver, Johnson, for the first down. A nice pickup. And Deacon Cooper was right there. Or was that Bully Cooper? I couldn't even see it. So far, Gregory slinging it quite well. Three completions. So they have had four plays. He's been sacked once and has three of three. He only has seven touchdowns on the season with 15 picks. He also has 269 on the ground, four touchdowns with two fumbles. Here is Matthews. He's stuffed after maybe two yards right up the middle. 
Matthews, 1,031 yards coming into this game. Eight touchdowns, but he has fumbled it six times. He has seven receptions, 138 yards, and one touchdown. He also has 422 kick return yards on the year. Gregory going to sling it again. And wide open is Prince McCutcheon. He accelerates inside the 20 down to the 16-yard line. That's McCutcheon's ninth reception on the season. Four consecutive completions so far here in the first quarter on the first drive for Owen Gregory. The best start to any game of the season for him. Both left-hand quarterbacks in this dynasty have struggled. Owen Black and Owen Gregory. Gregory going to throw it again probably, and he will. All day to throw it, and that pass was overthrown by just a bit. That's going to bring up second down and 10 from the 16-yard line as the Thunderbirds are threatening inside the red zone. Seven play, 57-yard drive so far, over two minutes off the clock. Three wide receivers bunched at the bottom. Gregory will throw it again to the end zone. Intercepted by Deacon Cooper. His first of the game and his fourth of the season. He threw it right to him. Take another look. And he just stepped right in front of Brandon Lee, the fullback, for the interception. And just like that, the Thunderbirds turn it over on downs or turn it over on an interception. And the Bears take over on offense. Darrell Stats leads the team onto the field. Two tight ends set. Mitchell in the backfield. And they're going to toss it out to him. He's going to throw the football back, though. And that is deflected away, intended for Darrell Stats. The offense for the Bears looks like this. Darrell Stats at quarterback. Over 1,000 yards passing, 8 touchdowns, 9 picks, 717 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns. Eric Tavares and Darius Mitchell at halfback. Gavin Brady at fullback. Howard Bresnigal at receiver, Smokey Callahan at tight end, Mike Heath, Sebastian Hernandez, and Will Jefferson on the O-line. And Mitchell's going to fumble the football. It's recovered by Southern Utah. My goodness, that is the sixth fumble on the year for Darius Mitchell. See on the bottom, Ball State beats the Akron Zips 61-55. The number two team in the country goes down. So you got to expect Savannah State will move up to number two in the rankings. As we take another look here at that fumble. Covered by a defensive tackle. The Thunderbirds at the 21-yard line. Great field position. Can they get some points this time near the red zone? High formation set. Lee and Matthews in the backfield. And they're going to throw it anyway. Gregory is picked off again. This is McGee. He returns it up to the 23-yard line and fumbles the football. Not sure who recovered it. It was Northern Colorado. Oh, my goodness. So the last two pass attempts from Owen Gregory have been interceptions. That was just an awful throw. Not even sure why you would attempt that pass. So Darrell Stats in the offense. Get another chance here. That's 24-yard line. At some point, you just got to feel bad for the Thunderbirds and how terrible their offense has performed this season. Stats out to Eric Tavares. Nice juke move. First down up to the 38-yard line. And that is Eric Tavares' 12th catch on the season as he gets closer to 200 yards receiving. He also has two touchdowns. And on the ground, he has 651 yards, nine scores, and two fumbles. Five wide receiver set. Stats. Deep shot down the field, and it is caught. Oh, my goodness. Howard Bresnigal comes down with it. Huge reception. That's his 12th on the season, and he's closing in on 300 yards receiving. He only has one touchdown receiving, though. And there we go again. C.J. Moreland getting beat by a raw player build receiver. Goodness gracious. Now let's take a look at the Southern Utah Thunderbirds defense. They are led by Jericho Stevens at defensive end. Adam Joseph at defensive tackle. Donald D. Jr. at middle linebacker. C.J. Moreland at corner. And Bryce King at strong safety. Stats on the option. Pitches out to Mitchell. And he's down inside the five-yard line. I believe that was King on the tackle. The Bears threatening. 
trying to get on the board first here in Cedar City, Utah against the Thunderbirds. With a win here today, both of these teams would have uh, equal records at 5-5. Five and five. Second down and four from the five-yard line. Mitchell cannot get the pitch from Stats. C.J. Moreland, nice tackle for a loss. That'll bring up third down and six for UNC. Moreland now with 25 tackles on the year. Two picks, 31 return yards, and six pass deflections. Let's see if Stats won't try to option it again. He will. He pitches out to Mitchell, who gets stuffed at the five-yard line. And we're going to see the Northern Colorado Special Teams Unit come out onto the field for a field goal attempt to take the lead here in the first quarter. 23-yard field goal attempt. Crowd going crazy. And the kick is up. And it is good. So the Bears take the lead 3-0 over top the Thunderbirds in the first quarter. See if Owen Gregory can come out here and settle down a little bit. Two interceptions already today. That gives him 17 on the season with only seven touchdowns. He also has two fumbles, so he's not very good at holding on to the football. Bar on for the kickoff. After he just made that 23-yard field goal. Career long for him. Probably not, but, you know, got to make fun of the cupcake kickers. Freeman on the return up past the 20 to the 21 yard line and here we go again. Will we see a third interception or will we see some actual offense out of the Thunderbirds this year? That's the question of the day. I formation Gregory hot routing receiver. Seven guys in the box for the defense. Gregory will play action. Throw it out to Brandon Lee, who uh, gets maybe six yards. <laughs> One of the best plays of the day for the Thunderbirds. Taking a look at the defense for the Bears. They've got Deacon Cooper and Bully Cooper, and that's it. They combined for 85 tackles, three for a loss, seven interceptions, 25 pass deflections, six force fumbles, and three fumbles recovered coming into this game. Gregory going to throw it again. No, he's going to take off. Bounces around like a pinball. Gets the first down and more. Great run for the quarterback. Picks up the first down. Gregory comes out in a five wide receiver set. And he will throw it deep. And that is picked off. And that's Bully Cooper. Who returns it up to the 30 or 48 yard line? Tack on five yards for the face mask. My goodness, three interceptions in the first quarter for Owen Gregory. He now has 18 on the season, and he'll be lucky if he doesn't get pulled out by the head coach, Donald Lee Sr. Crowd not happy with them at all right now. Their offense has been terrible. Stats, nice play action, and he's sacked anyway. Donald Lee Jr. on the sack. That's his second on the season. Stats tried to take off, just couldn't take off fast enough. Second down and 11 upcoming for the Bears. See if they can't get the running backs involved a little bit more. Maybe throw it out to Smokey Callahan at tight end. But they're going to go option again. Stats pitches it out. That's Eric Tavares. And he'll get it up to the 40-yard line. Tavares closing in on 700 yards rushing for the season. Both of the halfbacks for the Bears have nine scores. Tavares has two receiving touchdowns. Darius Mitchell has one kick return for a touchdown and two punt returns for touchdowns. So they've both been pretty active this year. And that's going to end the first quarter here in Cedar City, Utah. If you guys want to get in on the action in the FCS Dynasty, go ahead and join our Discord channel. I will leave a link in the chat and the comments below. If you want to actually get in there, have a college career, and then turn pro, because we will be having a 32-team custom pro league in Madden 06. The players from this dynasty will be imported 
to those draft classes. And here's a nice run from Darius Mitchell up towards the 30-yard line. But if you want to have a full college football career, possibly have a Heisman season, and get drafted number one overall in our professional football league, join our Discord, and you can get started today. The Bears continuing their nice drive. Mitchell in the backfield. Gavin Brady as well. Two tight end sets. Stats is going to throw it. And that's picked off by Donald Lee Jr. That's his fourth interception on the season. And it's just been an interception fest today. As you see on the bottom, Fresno State beats San Jose State. And they remain undefeated on the season. That means San Diego, the Toreros will be traveling to take on the number one ranked Fresno State Bulldogs. I believe that's next week. Or it might be week 13, I'm not sure. It is week 13, so never mind. They have one more game against Boise State next week. So that should be a crazy game for the Fresno State Bulldogs. See if they can't remain undefeated in the whack. A nice completion out to Matthews. Nice back juke. Still up. They can't bring him down. First down play for Cameron Matthews. Best play of the day for the Thunderbirds on offense. And they still have Owen Gregory in there with his three interceptions. Lee and Matthews in the backfield. And they're going to hand it off to Matthews right up the middle. Nice run. Picks up maybe six yards. Holy Cooper on the tackle. That'll bring up second down and four here in the second quarter. Thunderbirds looking to get on the scoreboard here for the first time today. Gregory going to throw it. This is never a good idea, but he completes it out to Matthews for the first down. They still can't tackle that young man. Matthews and Brandon Lee are the biggest bright spots of this offense they need a lot of help they need to recruit another quarterback give Gregory some competition light a fire under him or something first down at 10 in bear territory Gregory's gonna take off and he's gonna pick up nine yards a great run right up the middle that'll bring up second down and inches give it to the big fullback Thunderbirds with almost double the yards of UNC today. And yet they are losing 3-0. So many turnovers. Gregory going to throw it. He goes, takes a deep shot down to the end zone. And incomplete just overthrows Jaquan Freeman. And that was Bully Cooper on the coverage. See, I like that. It's second in inches. You can take a shot, not risk anything. And he just throws it out of the back of the end zone. And now you can just run the football for the first down, if they can manage it. Hand it off to the fullback. Come on. Gregory under center, and they're going to do a toss play on third and inches instead. Matthews gets the first down and more. He looked really tired right there as he gets caught from behind at the 30-yard line. First down for the Thunderbirds, though. Move the chains. This is a great drive. Hopefully it does not end in another Owen Gregory interception. That'll be his fourth of the game. Just over four and a half remaining here in the second quarter. Gregory in the shotgun. Four wide receivers set. He will throw it again. Takes a shot towards the end zone. And that's incomplete. He wanted Freeman once again. He just can't seem to connect with him ever since that first drive where Freeman had two receptions for first downs. That'll bring up second down at 10. We have yet to see Brandon Lee touch the football. Four wide receivers set, three at the top of the screen. Gregory will throw it, and that's deflected away. Not a good throw. That brings up third down and long now. Not a good situation to be in if you're the Thunderbirds offense, who has been struggling this entire season. Gregory comes out under center. And he's going to drop back, tries to take off, and he does. He's got the first down using his feet. I like it. Great decision 
by the quarterback to take off. His arm hasn't been working, might as well use his legs. That'll bring up first down and 10 inside the 20 yard line. 84% on the season the Thunderbirds are. 23 touchdowns, five field goals out of 33 attempts. From the 19, Gregory gonna throw it. Left side caught by Matthews. Deacon Cooper brings him down after about a three yard pickup. Quite a few receptions on this drive for Cameron Matthews. I believe that's his third. That'll give him 10 on the season, over 150 yards receiving with one score. 10 plays, 60 yard drive, over two minutes off the clock. They need to end this with a touchdown here. Gregory's going to throw it again. No, it's a draw play to Matthews. He's dropped for a big loss. Eric Tavares in there playing some linebacker. Brings him down. Loses about two or three yards. Thunderbirds are three of three on third down conversions today. Very surprising stat since they have zero points already. Or still. Shotgun formation, four wide receivers. Matthews in the backfield with Gregory. And Gregory's going to complete it out to Brandon Lee. Great pass. And Lee is up to the two-yard line. First and goal for the Thunderbirds. That was Brandon Lee's 11th reception on the season. He's got over 100 yards receiving and one touchdown on the year. See if they can't punch it in here from the two-yard line. Goal line formation. Lee looked confused. And Gregory's going to throw it out of goal line formation. And it's deflected away. Almost caught. My goodness. Why are you throwing it from the two? This is reminding me of the uh, Seahawks and Patriots Super Bowl. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Are they going to keep throwing it? Nope, they're going to hand to Matthews who dives. And he is short of the end zone. I don't think he got anything on that. And he got maybe a half a yard, which will move him up towards the one-yard line. Four of four on third down conversions. Two and a half minutes remain here in the first half. Third and goal from the one. And then the shotgun formation. Gregory to the end zone, deflected away again. Eric Tavares in there, having a great day on defense. Why are they throwing it? My goodness. On for the 18-yard field goal attempt. To tie things up. The kick is up and it is good. So we're all knotted up at three apiece. After a 16-play, 75-yard drive. That took over three minutes off the clock. And they settle for a field goal. They desperately needed a touchdown there. They've been struggling so much this season. Getting into the end zone on big drives like that. And that's resulted in all four of their losses. And if they continue that today, they're going to end up being 5-5. Five and five On the outside of the bowl season, looking in. Thunderbirds on for the kickoff. And that is deep. Howard Bresnagel on the return. And down at the 22-yard line. Only 88 yards of offense so far for the Bears. They haven't really run the football that well. They need to get stats going. They need to get Gavin Brady involved, Eric Tavares, and Darius Mitchell. Only 23 yards on the ground for the Bears. One of the best rushing offenses in the country. Stats, hot routing a receiver. And they're going to go option again. Stats, first down, and he gets destroyed by Bryce King. What a hit. That is King's 25th tackle on the season. He also has one for a loss, one pass deflection, and one forced fumble. First down and 10. Looks like they're in the same formation. And they're just going to hand it off to Mitchell, who gets stuffed. Still up, though, and gets taken down by Adam Joseph for a loss. And that is Adam Joseph's 14th tackle on the season. Nine for a loss. He has three sacks and a pass deflection as well. Lost maybe a half a yard on that play. So that'll bring up second down and 10 still. Two tight ends set. Stats goes play action. Deep shot way down the field. 
And it's dropped by Howard Bresnigan. Oh my goodness. He has so many drops this year. That's going to bring up third down at 10. Somebody's got to get a big play eventually today, right? Stats. Going to take a shot across the field, deflected away, and the Thunderbirds are going to get the football back. Oh, not a very good throw from Stats as he threw across the field, across his body. And we're going to see the Thunderbirds here again before this first half is over, see if they can't take the lead from the Bears. And a nice high punt. Way downfield to the 20-yard line is Jaquan Freeman. And he'll return it up to the 31 or 32-yard line. One of his better returns on the season. He only had 36 punt return yards coming into this game, so nothing really impressive. And they have the backup quarterback in now. Not sure what happened to Owen Gregory, if they just pulled him out of there because their offense stalled out at the one-yard line. And here we have an incomplete pass to start off the day for the backup quarterback. But I don't know if they just pulled him out because of no productivity or if he got injured. I didn't see anything. Second down and 10. Matthews in the shotgun formation with the backup quarterback. See if he fares any better than Gregory. And he's going to take a deep shot. Look at that spiral. And he overthrows his target anyway. Third down and 10 upcoming. Backup quarterback having about as much success as Owen Gregory has had all season. Which is not a whole lot at all. Thunderbirds 4 of 5 on third downs. The only one they failed was at the one yard line. But they got 10 yards to go here and a non-mobile quarterback. And he's pressured, throws off his back foot, deflected away, almost picked off by a lineman. And that'll bring up fourth down and 10. Thunderbirds will punt the football away yet again. Webb on for the punt. Back deep to return, Darius Mitchell, the ever dangerous Darius Mitchell. And there's going to be a fair catch from Mitchell at the 19-yard line. See if they won't just run the football here, run the clock out, and go into the half with a tie score. I've been very impressed with the Bears the last few games as Gavin Brady gets nothing on his first carry of the game. But their upset win over Cal Poly still blows my mind. I don't know how they did that. Alexander Connor throwing so many interceptions. Cal Poly just struggled so much against this Bears defense, who only has two subscriber players. And Stats pitches it out to Mitchell on the option. Nice back juke. Faked out Jericho Stevens, picked up five yards. But Cal Poly, that upset loss, they come back this week, and they played angry, and Sacramento State took all of it. Took all that anger and got absolutely obliterated. Third down and five. Stats under center. And they will run it again. There is Mitchell. Breaks loose in the open field. Still going up to the 44-yard line. They call a timeout. And they might try to get something going here with less than a minute remaining in the first half. See if they can't get down in field goal range. Maybe get a touchdown, perhaps. 124 yards of offense for the Bears so far. Two tight ends set. They're going to go play action. Stats rolling way out to the right. Takes a deep shot towards the end zone. And it's caught. It's brought down. And that's Chip Morris for the touchdown. The Bears take the lead with 45 seconds remaining in the first half. What a play to the non-subscriber receiver. My goodness. The Bears have, like, no speed at receiver. And Chip Morris just torched the non-subscriber cornerback and Bryce King for the touchdown. Goodness gracious. That's going to make it 10-3 with this extra point from Barr. And the kick is up. And it is good. 10-3 so is the score. Bears looking impressive again. That was Darrell Stats' ninth touchdown pass on the season. Let's 
see if we can't see any news on Owen Gregory, if he was injured or if they just benched him. Barr kicks it off. And that was in the end zone. Of the two yards deep in the end zone. Juan Freeman on the return. Taken down at the 22-yard line. Seven minutes time of possession for the Thunderbirds. 418 for the Bears. And yet the Bears have the lead. Thunderbirds need to get in the end zone. Can't keep getting stopped at the one-yard line. Kicking 18-yard field goals. It's not how you win football games. In case you were wondering. And they're going to throw it again. I don't even know this guy's name. But here's Brandon Lee getting a nice reception for six yards. That'll be his 12th reception of the season. Passing attack has really not been great at all this season for the Thunderbirds. Gregory had 1,364 yards passing coming into this game. And here's a nice completion for the first down. Thunderbirds might have something going here. 33 seconds remaining. Best player on this offense has actually been Brandon Red. 45 pancakes, only one sack allowed all season. And here's another completion. No, it is dropped by Johnson over the middle. And the backup quarterback's name is Goolsby. There we have that. Still no sign of Owen Gregory. Or an injury report, perhaps. 30 seconds left in the first half. Second down and 10. Goolsby going to throw it. He's hit as he throws. And that is deflected away by Deacon Cooper. Goolsby is 2 of 7 with 13 yards. It's going to bring up third down and 10. Got to get some yards here. Try to run this clock out as much as you can if you're not going to get a first down. Goolsby under center. He will throw it again. Pressured. Hit as he throws again. And this is completed out to Prince McCutcheon. What a catch in double coverage. Bully Cooper right there. First down to 10 from midfield. 19 seconds left. The Thunderbirds with one timeout remaining. Could possibly get in field goal range before the half is over. Goolsby going to chuck it up again. Pressure, takes a shot, deflected, and caught and dropped by Prince McCutcheon. That's been a big problem for him this season. A lot of drops. 12 hurry so far for the Bears' defense. One sack, three interceptions. Man. Second and 10. This quarterback is taking some shots, though. Taking some big hits and taking shots downfield. Shotgun formation, four wide receivers for Goolsby. And he'll chuck it up again. Pressured, stays up, and another drop pass for Prince McCutcheon. My goodness, he forgot his hands at home. That's going to leave 10 seconds left on the clock. Third down and 10. Thunderbirds still have their timeout left. They're 5 of 7 on third down conversions today. Five wide receivers set for Goolsby. He's going to throw it up again. Pressure. No, he's going to be sacked this time by the non-subscriber defensive end. There's a holding call. That'll be declined. That'll bring up fourth down and 14. And the Bears call a timeout. That'll be senior. Not happy on the sideline. And he just took way too long to throw that. Never even made a try at it. So we might see Darius Mitchell on a punt return here. Unless they kick it out of bounds, which would be the smart play. And they will kick it out deep towards the sideline, I believe. Nope. Mitchell at the 12-yard line. Gets taken down at the 20. And that's going to end the first half. Bears on top, 10-3 to here in Cedar City, Utah. Over the 5-4. and four. Southern Utah Thunderbirds. The Bears are 4-5, and five, looking to get back to 500 on the season and get one game closer to a bowl berth, which would be huge after they started the season 1-5. and five. They're on a four-game winning streak, or a three-game winning streak right now, headed into this game. 
looking to make it four straight against the Thunderbirds. And the Bears do get the ball to start the second half with a chance to take a two-score lead over Southern Utah. And on the return is Darius Mitchell. He's going to take it out of the end zone, up past the 20 to the 25-yard line. Nice return for Darius. He is up over 700 kick return yards on the season with one touchdown. Pretty close in stats for the first half. Thunderbirds had five more first downs, but they have seven less points. Tavares in the backfield. Behind Stats, they're going to go option. Stats keeps it and gets the first down. Taken down by Bryce King. And he doesn't get the first down. It looked like he fell over the first down line, but they don't give it to him. He's going to bring up second down and one. Not a very good spot by the ref. I formation, Smokey Callahan in there at tight end. Have yet to see his number called today. And Stats going to hand it off to Gavin Brady. He's got the first down. That was way too easy. About a four-yard pickup for the big fullback. He's now over 200 rushing yards on the season with one touchdown. Both teams at 250 for yards. Northern Colorado, 251. Stats under center. Four wide receivers. He will throw it this time. And he finds Eric Tavares, but he picks up nothing on that reception. There are stats, 4 of 7, 121 yards today, one touchdown, one pick. Owen Gregory, still no word on him. I want to say he was benched, but I have no proof of this. We will find out after the game if he was injured or not. Stats on the option again. CJ Moreland gets blocked. Stats is in the open field. He's got the first down, about a 14-yard pickup. And they're just running all over that left side to a tune of 64 yards. In Thunderbird territory again are the Bears. Pro formation. And they're going to hand it off to Mitchell who goes right up the middle for the first down. C.J. Moreland with a nice tackle. Mitchell up to 56 yards today. Well over 1,000 yards now on the season. He's at 1,045. Right. 219 yards of offense now for the Bears. And they're coming out with three wide receivers bunched to the bottom. Stats going to hand it off to Tavares. Breaks a tackle, breaks another one, still going. Picks up 12 yards on a first down. These running backs are just too talented for the Bears. Man, if UNC can get some quality recruits on defense in the offseason, this team is going to be nasty in the next year or two. They do need a backup quarterback. Somebody to sit behind Darrell Stats, learn a little bit from him be there in case Stats gets injured. They do run the option quite a bit as you see it there again, but Mitchell gets stopped for no gain. They need some receivers as well for the Bears. They've only got one, Smokey Callahan. Their offensive line is solid, and their defense, they need everybody up in the front seven, because all they have is two safeties. Stats in the eye formation, and here is Darius Mitchell. He's going to pick up five or six more yards. Now for the Thunderbirds, they need a quarterback. You see Owen Gregory has struggled all season. And they need a tight end and some offensive linemen. They need some outside linebackers, some corners, and a free safety. They're down at four for the Bears. Stats going to throw it. All day to throw it. And he finds a man wide open. It's Howard Bresnagel, his second touchdown reception of the season. He was wide open. I don't know what happened to the defense there. Let's take another look at it. Zone coverage, it looks like. And not even a defender in sight. And look who he beats. C.J. Moreland allows another touchdown. Write that one down. The person that can keep track of all the touchdowns he's allowed, you'll get a shout-out in one of the videos at the end of the year. Because he's had to have allowed like 20 touchdown receptions this year. Ball rod for the extra point make this 14 point game and that is good so it is 17 to 3 
And I'm not sure I can see the Thunderbirds coming back. Their offense has just been so stagnant. Had a couple good drives. They resulted in interceptions and getting stopped at the one yard line and attempting an 18 yard field goal. Their backup quarterback is in. He's not athletic. At least with Owen Gregory, he has the option of running. Goolsby is not an athlete. So we're just going to see him chuck it up. And they're not running the football well either. On the return, Jaquan Freeman, he's just going to kneel this one down four yards deep in the end zone. And see what Goolsby can do for the Thunderbirds. And they're going to keep throwing it with him. And this pass is caught by Jaquan Freeman. That's only about a three-yard pickup, though. That'll make it second down and seven. Crowd is kind of growing a little bit restless right now. Just watching their offense do the same plays over and over and over again. Four wide receivers set for Goolsby. Matthews next to him in the shotgun. And they're going to go option. Brandon Lee, he's got it. And pitches it out to Matthews. And that's only going to get him four more yards. Matthews only 20 yards today. It's going to bring up third down and three. For the Thunderbirds, you have to be successful on the ground. Or you're not going to win games. We've seen that all season. All of their wins, they were able to pound the rock. Third down and three. Five of eight today on third down conversions. Looks like they're going to throw the football again as they move Matthews out in motion to the bottom of the screen. And Goosby will drop back to throw it over the middle and connects with the tight end for the first down. So a pretty good throw to Crosby for the first. And the Thunderbirds have themselves a drive going. Five wide receivers set. Goolsby going to chuck it up again. And that is a drop. That was completed and then dropped. So Goolsby is on target so far today for the most part. His receivers are just letting him down a little bit. Doesn't help that he keeps throwing to the non-subscriber receivers as well. And they're going to hand off to Brandon Lee on a rare carry today. And he goes nowhere. And that's going to bring up another third down and ten. We've seen this time and time again tonight. And they will come out. Four wide receiver set. Matthews in the backfield behind Goolsby. And he is pressured and sacked immediately. My goodness. This is a jailbreak blitz. Crowd unhappy. That's going to bring up fourth down and 13. Webb is on for the punt. 44 yards per punt today. One inside the 20. Mitchell back deep to return the punt. Less than a minute now remains here in the third quarter. In Cedar City, Utah, here is Mitchell from his own 19-yard line. Returns it up the left sideline, and Prince McCutcheon saves a touchdown and injures his elbow on the tackle. Definitely not what they need is more injuries. Mitchell almost broke free for that one. 25-yard return. And he's got about 400 yards on punt returns this season. And he stays on the field at the halfback spot. And he gets the pitch. He gets nothing on it, though. Donald Lee Jr. on the tackle. Mitchell still looking for that 10th touchdown run of the year. And they're just running some of the clock out now. Prince McCutcheon is done for the game, so that's a huge loss for the Thunderbirds offense. That just leaves Jaquan Freeman at receiver for Southern Utah. And Mitchell gets the carry, cuts back towards the middle, and picks up four or five yards. And that is most likely going to be the final play of the third quarter as the Bears are running the clock out as they pound the rock down the Thunderbirds' throats. 
And they actually do snap the football. Stats pitches it out. And Bryce King with a great tackle at the 49-yard line. That will end the third quarter. Not sure why they snapped the football. But a huge hit by Bryce King. My goodness. 17-3 is the score at the end of the third quarter in Cedar City, Utah. Crowd going crazy. They need a big play here. Back deep to return. I don't even know because they're doing a safe return. And that is a very long kick. And it's going to bounce through the back of the end zone. What a punt by Barr. My goodness. That'll give the Thunderbirds the ball at the 20-yard line. Goolsby still trying to get something going for this offense. He has one less target to throw to now with the Prince McCutcheon injury. Four wide receivers set. Taking a sweet old time snapping the football. And they're going to go draw play to Matthews. And he picks up six or seven yards. Tack on five for the face mask. First down, Southern Utah. Head coach Michael Tops for the Bears. Not happy with that call. Father of Heisman Memorial Trophy winner Ken Tops out of Mississippi State. Hail State. I formation for the Thunderbirds. And now they're going to keep running the football. They're down by two scores and they're going to run it. But all game, they've been throwing it. That makes <laughs> zero sense to me. That's going to bring up second down and seven. From their own 35-yard line. The time is ticking away. We are now at 5 minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Hot routing a receiver. Goolsby going to chuck it. Goes over the middle and another drop pass for the receiving core. This time it's Turner. That'll bring up third down and long yet again. Thunderbirds have put themselves in this situation all game. They are 6 of 10 on third downs. They've been doing great. But these third and longs are killing them. Goolsby lead to throw again. Down the middle, and it's caught. 81's got it. Up to the 41-yard line. I think that's Turner. Nice reception in front of McGee. There's that Johnson. There's so many receivers on this team, I don't even know all their names. I do know the subscriber receiver names, though. And that's all that matters. Another third down conversion. They're now 7 of 11, and that was Johnson on the reception. Three catches today, 56 yards for the non-sub receiver. And they're going to try to run it again, and Matthews goes nowhere. Dargan on the tackle for a loss. Lost maybe half a yard. Goolsby under center here on second down and 10. They need a touchdown, and they need it fast. And they're going to keep running the football. Matthews gets loose and picks up 10 yards close to the sticks. And it's going to be third and inches. Hand it off to your fullback. Brandon Lee has the acceleration of a cheetah. Give him the football. Inches to go. What will they do? Goal line formation. They're going to hand it off. No, they're going to throw it. Deep shot. And it's caught. It's the score. Touchdown, Southern Utah. What a play. What a throw from Goolsby. Probably the best throw we've seen this entire season from a Thunderbirds quarterback. Goodness gracious. They finally get in the end zone, folks. We got ourselves a football game. And that was Turner on the touchdown reception. 31-yard catch. That's going to make a 17 to 10 here with an extra point. It's going to come down to an exciting finish, I think. I hope. I wish. Webb on for the extra point. Kick is up and good. So it is 17 to 10 here in the fourth quarter. Late in the game. 3.59 remaining in the ballgame. Can the Thunderbirds defense hold off the Bears? and get their offense another opportunity to get in the end zone and tie this thing up.
This will be a huge comeback for the Thunderbirds, who has had a stagnant offense the entire game for the most part and the entire season. They need this win to become bowl eligible. The Bears, of course, they need two more wins to be bowl eligible. And with a win here today, the Bears would be 4-2 and two in conference play. With a loss today, the Thunderbirds would be 4-2. and two. And still, both of them would have a shot at the Pac-10 title. It's outrageous. Stats, hot routing receiver, they can't hear. The crowd's going crazy. Howard Bresmigale having a hard time understanding the hot route. And they're going to go option. Stats, left side. And pitches it out. Tavares has it. 13-yard pickup and a first down for the Bears. On that left side, they keep going to the left, and it's working out for them quite nicely. Got to bring up first down at 10 from the 33-yard line. The Bears, a buck 37 on the ground, a buck 38 through the air today. Very balanced. We still haven't seen Smokey Callahan once today. And here are stats on the option. Pitches it out to Mitchell. He's got the sideline and more up to the 45-yard line of the Thunderbirds. And he's got 93 yards on 14 carries today. Just a fantastic play. You see Darrell Stats out there blocking Adam Joseph, the big defensive tackle. That's ballsy. First and 10 from the 44-yard line. Two tight ends set. They have Tavares out there on the number two tight end spot. Stats running the clock down as much as he can. And he's going to toss it out to Mitchell, who loses two yards. Not a very good play. Very close. Halfback comparisons right there. Mitchell and Matthews. Very close in yards, touchdowns, average, all that jazz. Second down and 12. Less than three minutes to play now here in Cedar City. Crowd still behind their team right now, cheering them on. They need a big stop here. Stats going to hand to Mitchell up the middle, still going. Picks up seven yards, I believe. Donald Lee Jr. on the tackle. And they actually give him credit for an eight-yard pickup. So that makes it third and manageable. Third down and four. The Bears are 50% today on third down conversions. Three of six. And they come out five wide receivers set. Very surprising. The ground game's been working for them. And it looks like they might throw it here. With just over two minutes remaining in the game. That's going to throw it. He's got all day. Takes a deep shot towards the end zone. It's caught and dropped by Howard Bresnagale. you got to be kidding me. There's a holding call on Adams. That'll be declined. Fourth and four. The Thunderbirds get the stop they needed. Howard Bresnagel, another drop on the season. He has so many. And I believe he is a smart wide receiver build, so he should not be dropping anything. His catch rating is outstanding. And the Bears are going to go for it here. Going for it all. Going for the win right here. Fourth down and four from the 38-yard line. Stats going to throw it. Pressure, hit as he throws, and another drop by Howard Bresnagel. You are kidding me right now. What in the world? Bresnagel letting his team down big right there. The Thunderbirds now with a chance to tie it. Two-minute drill. Commence. Cools being the shotgun. He's going to throw it up. He's pressured. And he completes it out to Jaquan Freeman for a three-yard pickup. That's Goolsby's third consecutive completion. They're going to go no huddle. And they're going to run the football. Cam Matthews up the middle. And he picks up five yards. That makes it third down and two. And they're going to go in the huddle. No need to rush. You got your timeouts. You're 8 of 12 on third downs today. You're doing great. You need two yards here. And they will hand it off to Matthews. He picks up the first down. Escapes the defenders. Deacon Cooper finally tracks him down at the 46-yard line. And the Thunderbirds look like they might tie this thing up, folks. The 
band going crazy. The crowd going crazy. Bresnigel, player of the game for the Bears, even though he has like four drops today. Donald Lee Jr., player of the game for the Thunderbirds. Goolsby going to chuck it up again. Rolling out, throws back across his body and almost intercepted. My goodness, I don't know why the quarterback's upset with Matthews. That was an awful decision. But the clock stops. The Thunderbirds have a minute and eight seconds remaining. They have all three timeouts. They are in great field position right now. Second down and 10 from the 46-yard line of UNC. Fools be to throw again. Quick pass. Jaquan Freeman has it. And he gets up to the 41-yard line. That makes it third down and five. Less than a minute remains now. 59 seconds. Thunderbirds are 9 of 13 on third down conversions. That has been the biggest bright spot of the day for them. And here's Goolsby again to throw it. Pressured. And throws it deep. Deflected away by McGee. That was intended for Brandon Lee. McGee is pumped up. It is fourth down at five. Thunderbirds need this play. Who's going to step up? Goolsby in the shotgun. Matthews to his left. Brandon Lee out in the slot. Jaquan Freeman. They're going to run the football. There's a face mask. They don't call it on Weddle. And that is going to be the game, folks. He definitely brought him down by the face mask. And they did not call it. The crowd saw it. They are not happy. They are letting the referee know it. Oh, my goodness. What a stop by the defense. They got away with a penalty, though. That should have been an automatic first down. Oh, my goodness. Darius Mitchell stopped after one yard. He has 100 yards rushing today. I still can't believe the ref didn't throw the flag on the face mask. If you guys have been watching this entire dynasty, you know that the refs have no problem throwing flags. A lot of these teams get penalized quite a bit. Second down and nine from the 44-yard line. Thunderbirds only have one timeout remaining. There still is a chance that they get the ball back, but not anymore. Darius Mitchell gets the first down. He gets rocked by Bryce King. But that is going to do it, folks. The Bears are going to be improving to 5-5 five and five on the season. The Thunderbirds drop to 5-5. Five and five. So both teams at 500. They both still need one victory to become bowl eligible. And there's a encroachment penalty by the defensive tackle, Adam Joseph. Showing a little frustration there. My goodness, what a game this was. Came down to an, uh, a face mask that wasn't called by the refs. I'm sure the Thunderbird fans... Want a full-on investigation into that referee. I know this entire stadium does right now as their boos are drowning out my commentary. The Bears just trying to run the clock out. What a game, guys. Like I said before earlier in the broadcast, if you are not in the Discord channel with us, go ahead and join us. There will be a link in the chat and the comments below. We have 55 members currently as I do this commentary. And I'm hoping before our professional league gets going that we can have at least 100 guys in there. But sometime next year, there will be a full league reveal for our pro league. And we will use an imported draft class from this dynasty. It won't be this after this first year. It'll be after year two of this dynasty. We will import a draft class into that and get it going. But a huge win here today for the Bears, folks. Four victories in a row. They were one and five. They were dead. And now they are back. Just a huge win. 17-10 over the Thunderbirds. Both squads now five and five on the season. As we take a look at the stats, Darius Mitchell to get player of the game today for the Bears. I don't care about Resnigel's touchdown. He had so many drops today. Time of possession was pretty even. Northern Colorado gets shut out in the fourth. 
Courtney Goolsby, 9 of 20, 106 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Owen Gregory, three picks. Don't even know if he got injured or they just pulled him. Because he came in after his third interception, he was in there. And his last drive resulted in them getting stuffed at the one-yard line, making a field goal. So he might have got injured, and I just didn't see it. But Prince McCutcheon, he was just out for the rest of this game. We will see him for the rest of the year. Man in red, five pancakes today. He has 50 now on the season, only one sack allowed. Fantastic player on the offensive line. Bryce King, eight tackles today. C.J. Moreland with five. He did allow a touchdown to Howard Bresnigal. Drew T. on the beat. Yeah, buddy. If you guys make beats or know anybody that makes beats and wants them featured in some of these videos, go ahead and send those to me on Twitter, on Discord, however you want to send it in an email. That would be sweet. I'll give the beatmaker credit in the description below. Always looking for new beats. YouTube only has so many. They're all stats. 5 of 10, 138 yards today. Two touchdowns, one pick. Sacked once along of 56. Mitchell, 112 yards. Tavares with 33. Stats, 27. Gavin Brady with 4. No rushing touchdowns for the Bears. That's very unusual for them. One fumble from Mitchell. He now has six on the season. Howard Bresnagale with a touchdown. Chip Morris, 56-yard touchdown. They only give Bresnagale credit with two drops. He had like five today. Well, Jefferson, Heath, Hernandez all had pancakes and no sacks allowed. One of the best offensive lines in the nation. They do need to improve their pass uh, blocking, though, just a little bit. Deacon Cooper and Bully Cooper both had five tackles today. Bully Cooper with a pick. I believe Deacon Cooper had an interception as well. I could be wrong. I'm so happy for Northern Colorado and their fans. I know we have some fans that were so upset earlier in the season because they were just getting smoked by everybody. But they did have one of the toughest schedules in the preseason. So the fact that they're all the way back at 500 right now is very impressive. That win over Cal Poly was humongous. And that's the only win right there that actually just gives them a shot at a bowl game. If they didn't win that game, they would have a losing season, no doubt. But they're both 5-5 five and five now on the season, 4-2 and two in conference play. And apparently Owen Gregory was not injured, so they just pulled him after a scoring drive. Northern Colorado, their next game, they will be hosting the Portland State Vikings who have been upsetting people all season. Our next Thunderbirds football game, they'll be traveling to take on the Cal Poly Mustangs and then after that they take on UC Davis so I don't even get to use the Thunderbirds again this season. They need to win one of those games to reach a bowl game. But I will see you guys tomorrow with VMI taking on Western Carolina in a Big 12 game. Take it easy.